All right, everyone, welcome to another edition of the Good Life Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Blakely, and I'm excited today to be joined by Seth Mashmeyer, who is the owner of Gambino's Pizza here in Carney. So, Seth, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Excited. Yeah, so let's get into it here and get to know a little bit more about you. Um, what are some books or a book that you're reading or listening to right now? Um, so, I used to read books all the time. I really enjoyed it, and I uh, don't read as much as I used to. Yeah. As much as I like to. Thank goodness for audiobooks that you yeah. can listen to them. Um, but I would like to get like actual books out and read again, like I used to. Uh, um, but this podcast, thinking back, you know, uh, some of the books that I did read just in preparation of opening our business and figuring out how we want to lead and how we want to manage and yeah. do that sort of stuff. So some of those books were uh, Bet on Talent uh, okay. by Deanne Turner, who used to work with Chick-fil-A. Okay. And then uh, Covert Cows by Steve Robinson, who also worked for Chick-fil-A. And okay. that one's more marketing. Uh, Bet on Talent is finding good people to work for you yeah. and how to uh, lead them and train them. and. Um, Create expectations of them yeah. on how to serve customers, I guess. And then uh, Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink yeah. and Lee Babin. Um, that was a book that I was recommended to when I was working with Project Still. And, um, they all love that book. Yeah. They work hard, you know, honestly. And, and so just uh, trying to clean a little bit from that book and implement it in our business here as well. Yeah. Um, it's easy to read those books and learn from them, and it's much more difficult to implement it, and that's something that I'm still trying to figure out yeah. on how to do well, and if at all, you know. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Those first two books that you mentioned, obviously they come from, you know, people that were involved with Chick-fil-A, but are they just, like, are they, do they kind of lean towards um, someone that's maybe, maybe going to be starting or opening a restaurant, or is it pretty broad base as far as anybody in any small business can use the principles. Yeah, it's pretty broad base. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm not sure who I heard this from. I'm sure many people have said it, but everyone's a salesman. Yeah. Um, you're always selling something. And so learning how to sell to people, how to serve people, that's the biggest thing is in the biggest priority for Karen and I is just serving people well and um, knowing that they're valued and sure um, that's what that's where you are going to reap your reward and um, make your money or profit or absolutely or any of that. Yeah. yeah. So um, those so uh, bet on talent is more so serving and teaching your staff how to serve well, sure. um, how to treat customers and um, be accommodating, you know, even though it may be difficult yeah. or may seem like you're getting taken advantage of. Um, it goes a long way if you can learn how to do that. Yeah. And then uh, covert cows is more on marketing and um, how to appeal to, you know, your audiences and, um, you know, your community. Sure. Cool. So it's, it, it covers, yeah, it'd yeah. be beneficial for anyone who um, is in the service industry. Awesome. Yeah. I'll have to look those up. And then Extreme Ownership, I read that one. That's one I think you could read it, put it down, three months later, pick it up and read it again and yeah. get something completely new yeah. or learn a new lesson off of, uh, you know, what they're talking about in that book. That's yeah. a good book. And, I, and granted, I've listened to it on audiobook. Yeah. It was nice listening to it when I was mowing, you know, a few summers ago, and I probably I listened, re-listened to it um, in preparation of opening uh, Gambinos, and have probably listened to it again since then, so yeah. three or four times, you know. And yeah. and yeah, you always pick on something new. It's always good to be reminded or refreshed on something. Yeah. And, um, but again, still trying to figure out how to implement it all. You know, that's. Yeah. 
So how about podcasts? Are you listening to one or many podcasts right now? I listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah. Or I have. I think I was introduced to podcasts in like 2006 when I first came here. And yeah. So uh, a lot of the podcasts I list, listen to though are more uh, along the lines of theology and uh, Christian doctrine and, okay. and just learning, you know, from pastors or theologians. And, yeah. I know that doesn't really have anything to do with Gambino's pizza per se, but um, that's something that's important to me and my yeah. wife. And I still want to make sure that I'm grounded with that and um, still uh, growing in that area. So a lot of that is what I listen to for a podcast. Uh, the main one that I listen to every day is The Briefing by Albert Moeller. Okay. And that is just going over uh, news of the day uh, with the oh, Christian okay. uh, perspective or worldview. Okay. So um, that's one that I will listen to every day and I just like listening to him. I respect him um, a lot. And then uh, another one that I listen to pretty regularly right now is The Way I Heard It by Mike Rowe, okay. who did Dirty Jobs. Yep. Um, these podcasts aren't so much about uh, business or uh, growing anything and it's it's more so uh, just him telling a story and okay. and sort of leading you on in one direction throughout the podcast and then sort of switching it on you and just sort of um, surprising you with where the story went in. and uh, he's very creative at what he does and very good at it so I'll to um, that one. I like my girl. yeah that's one that's just sort of more entertaining easy listening and Sort of, um, sometimes, not too focused, you, so. sometimes you just need a break. Right? Yeah. When it comes to like you're as a small business owner, you're thinking about your business all the time. Sometimes you just need a break. Like, yeah. I don't want to think about. I want to think about something else. I want to give my mind a break for thirty minutes. And yeah. Think about something else. So. Yeah. Yeah. So his podcast, it was, it was only like five to seven minutes, so it was a real short one. Yeah. And uh, but he crammed a lot in there, and it was very good. Uh, but now he, uh, I believe he wrote a book with all of these. The way I heard it podcast. Oh, okay. And so now he's going back through each podcast, but expanding on it and discussing it even more and going more in depth with the stories and nice. other stories that relate to it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So cool. it's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. All right, so we know a little bit more about you. Why don't you uh, take us back, um, and you can go as far back as you want, uh, but just kind of walk us through your journey to becoming a small business owner um, with Gambinos. Um, and like I said, just take us through vision to reality about kind of when this started for you and mm -hmm. uh, take us up to today. So I, I've always sort of had an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, know that I always wanted to just be on my own or, or work, you know, do my own thing. And I believe I get that from my dad, who um, he was in corporate America, you know, growing up. Okay. Uh, uh, however, eventually he went out on his own, and he knew that that's what he always wanted to do as well. So um, he's owned a couple businesses now, and has been running them successfully. And so I think just seeing that uh, made me want to sort of replicate it and it was instilled in me at a younger age. Yep. Um, and then the owner of Gambinos is actually good friends with my dad okay. and a good family friend of, I mean, their family's a good friend of our family. And so I've known Kevin for years. Mm -hmm. um, and he has the same mindset, you know, just an entrepreneur. He uh, worked his way up through Gambinos and um, now owns it. And, and just seeing that, I knew, yeah, I want to do something like that. Uh, so, granted, back then, before I even worked at Gambinos Pizza, I, I uh, started in Fremont in high school. I was 15 or 16, I don't remember okay. how old I was when I started. Um, but started working there and worked there for a couple of years and then went off to college and 
in the back of my mind, I always thought, well, I could do Gambino someday if I decide I don't want to do anything else. Sure. Um, when I went to school, I thought, um, well, maybe I'll do architecture. I was interested in that. And then teaching is sort of what I landed on. Okay. Uh, elementary school teaching. And then I wanted to coach high school sports, you know, football and track probably. Um, but then in school, in college, I, I guess in high school, I uh, did what I needed to get by. Yeah. You know, I wasn't a straight A student at all. Um, hardly ever studied. I just, you know, winged it. Right. And straight C student, you know, <laughs> just getting, getting through it and doing what I needed to, to pass. And so when I got to college and realized, oh, you need to study, um, that was a little difficult adjustment for me sure figuring that out so i i jumped around a bit i took my time uh took semesters off just wasn't sure what i was going to do sure um but then i got a job with striker at the hospital and um was a great job get paid get benefits did that for seven years um enjoyed the people at the hospital working with them uh, but it just wasn't very fulfilling for me um, it's just, I needed something more exciting and more challenging and sure. something to do. Um, and so I ended up going to Grab Jacks and, uh, enjoyed that. I've always enjoyed working outside, working on our lawn and our okay. landscaping. And so it was a good fit there. Um, they're very hard workers. Uh, and so I, I learned a lot from that. Just really sort of striker. I, may sound bad, but I wasn't challenged to work as hard. Sure. Um, just because of the nature of the job, I guess. Yep. Whereas garage Jeff's like, yeah, you work hard and you go nonstop, sun up, sun down. And, um, just sort of realizing that again and, and learning that again mm -hmm. was good. Yep. Um, so uh, getting instilled with that hard work and then I ended up having an accident there where I busted up my fingers pretty good. Okay. And fortunate I didn't lose them in the mowing accident. Okay. And so Karen and I had already been discussing the possibility of opening Gambinos then. Okay. Um, but when that happened, that was sort of like, okay, we're gonna do this. Right. I don't wanna deal with the risk anymore. Mm -hmm. um, let's just go on our own. And uh, so that, that was sort of the turning point where it's like, okay, we're going to do it. And, and when was that? <clears throat> that was in May. I remember the day for a little while there. I think it was like May 18th of 2018. Okay. Or 2019. Okay. I might be off a year, but um, that was sort of when it was like, okay, we're going to do this. Yep. Um, and so we really started talking with Kevin a lot more in depth, you know, how's this gonna look? How do we do it? Uh, do you think Carney would welcome a Gambinos? Do you think it would work here? Um, so the Gambinos is a franchise that's in many states. Yeah, yeah, it started down in Kansas. Okay. There's a few in Nebraska, a lot more in Kansas, some in Oklahoma, Texas, and okay. Missouri. Okay. Sort of regional in the Midwest here. Um, and so he said, yeah, we, I wanted to get into Carney for a while. It'd be great. Like, let's do it. Yeah. And so that took, um, so like March, April, May, June, um, sort of recovering with my accident. And then, or not March, May, and then April, March. See here, I'm saying something silly that you're going to have to edit out. May, June, July, recovering. And then August is when I eventually left Grodjack okay. um, to work towards this. Um, we, uh, we landed on this location just because it was so close. Um, didn't really think about it, you know, the countless times we drove by, but then, sure. I mean, we were looking at a bunch of different other places. Yeah. And they were like, well, what about that old murders and Gerber? I mean, close to our house, you know, we'll make, why 
might not be big enough, we'll see. Sure. And so uh, that's where we landed on it here. And um, I'd say we got the keys to get into it in October. And so we see Tyler just is coming out. Yeah, it's like you distracted me. <laughs> Sorry, no problem. <laughs> um, so you're in October? In October, we got in here, and then uh, October, November, December, we were renovating it, and that okay. was primarily me and my father-in-law, uh, Sig. Uh, we pretty much did everything here. Okay. The build-out, um, except the, you know, electrical and plumbing, you know, the heavy-duty stuff. Sure. Um, and then we opened in January, uh, the 17th of January. Got it. Yeah. And had a baby like three weeks before you opened? Yeah, we had a baby. We had Atlee on December 23rd. Yeah. So right in the thick of it, you know, getting it sort of to where we're almost finished. And yeah, it was just crazy. I forget about that. Um, I know a little bit about that story. Because you actually wanted to open in December, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, but just, and I think that's kind of one of the things probably you learned being a small business owner is uh, sometimes things don't always work out. Right? Yeah, I mean, we wanted to open in August when school started and yeah. be a part of Blue and Gold Days, and yeah, that didn't happen. Yeah, not even close. But um, yeah, cool. Yeah. Very good. So, what's your favorite part now that you're a little bit over a year? What's your favorite part about being a small business owner? Um, I think what I appreciate and enjoy the most is that we're in control of, you know, how successful we are for right. the most part. Right. Granted, we're dealing with the pandemic, which sure is sort of, you know, we weren't really accounting for that. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, you're going to. Uh, reap what you sow and how hard you work at it, and, you know, is what you're going to benefit from. Sure. Um, and there are still things that are out of your control that will influence that. But yep. yeah, just knowing that the kind of marketing we put out, the interaction we have with customers, the interaction we have on social media or other media, or um, however we promote ourselves, like that's what's going to determine whether we. Uh, have sales or not. Sure. And stay open. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, just, and previous employers, you know, and I think anyone can relate to this. Um, some employers, you know, reward you for hard work mm -hmm. and um, recognize that. And some employers may not recognize that. Right. Or you think they should and they don't, you mm -hmm. know. And so, you may become lax or whatever, may not work as hard, and sure. it's not gonna result in anything. Right. And so just knowing that we're in control of that again, you know, that goes a long way. You talked um, a little bit ago about, uh, I think it was with Stryker, you just weren't fulfilled as far as the job. Does this, being a small business owner, kind of give you the fulfillment that maybe you were looking for, do you think? Uh, yeah, because it, yeah, I guess what I was looking for there was a challenge. Yeah. And uh, as silly as it sounds, just something to keep active and keep going. You sure. Know? Um, it was easy to go and set up a case and just wait for it to be done. Yeah. And just sit and wait. A whole lot of hurry up and wait mm -hmm. is what it was. And, um, and I know there were things that I probably could have done to have uh, made it more challenging or done more work yeah. there um, and worked into a sales position or something. But mm -hmm. eventually, while I was there, I just learned the medical field probably isn't for me. Sure. And doing sales in that area probably wasn't for me. So yeah. um, I didn't want to, you know, really pursue that sure. any more than I needed to. Yeah. And the, the reason I bring that up is because I think that uh, if you're doing something, even if you're making a lot of money, 
if you don't feel passionate about it or you're not fulfilled, uh, there's a part of it that's just like, why am I doing this? And like, money's great, and you have to have money, but there's something more to what you do. I mean, start your own business, you know, if you had money saved up, there's you know, a chance that you're gonna burn through that, but if you've got a passion for it and you look forward to going to work every day, sometimes that's, you know, even better. So that's why I brought that up. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Gambino's definitely gives us that challenge and, yeah. and, and gives me that drive. I, I guess I just, maybe the drive wasn't there yeah. um, previously, so. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, pay was good. Benefits were great. Sometimes Karen and I are like, Karen and I are like, why did we leave that? Right. You know, yeah. The benefits are better than what we've got now. You yeah. Know? Um, but uh, yeah, it, whether it, it it needs to be fulfilled, sure, in one way or another. Right? Yeah. And uh, it can fulfill one aspect of your life, but if it's not fulfilling the more important aspects, then you're just going to be unhappy and disappointed. Yeah. yeah. You know. So is this opening this restaurant, being a small business owner, having employees, is it what you thought it would be? Uh, you know, I, I think, and probably a lot of people can blame a lot of stuff on COVID and the mm -hmm. pandemic right now, but yeah. I think because of it, my... I don't even remember what I thought it was going to be right before that because it's just been something completely different yeah. and unexpected. And so I would say no, just because I don't even remember what that was anymore. It makes what sense. it was going to be. Yeah. Um, you just we just had to learn how to adjust and roll with it and roll with the punches and yeah and go with it. Yeah. Um, Gambino's. Like we're in a good position, uh, just being a pizza place because pizza's made to be delivered. Sure, you know, everyone gets pizza delivered and right. it's easy. And so having that established already and going um, helped us get through it all. Yeah. Um, had we been somewhere else or some other uh, restaurant that doesn't necessarily do delivery mm -hmm. from the get go, I can see why it's more difficult for them. Yeah. More of a struggle. Yeah. And why uh, third party delivery services are a great benefit sure. you know, and help, helpful for them. Yeah. So let's talk about the pandemic a little bit. Um, you mentioned it a little bit, you know, pieces made to be delivered. And I know there were some businesses that kind of had to change things on the fly where <clears> they <throat> hadn't already been doing food delivery, they kind of uh, needed to do something to keep the doors open. But you are essentially a new business that was about just two months into, you know, being open and um, the pandemic hits. Talk about um, kind of how you had to adjust on the fly and if there was anything that you guys implemented um, or changed within your business that you maybe weren't planning on doing that early or even at all that have maybe that's benefited you and that probably something that you'll carry forward going on. Yeah, we we started off rock star, you know, the first two months, sure. better than expected. Yep. And uh, Kevin sort of talked about that just in general. It'll start off real strong, and he called it the honeymoon stage. Mm -hmm. You make more money than you know what to do with it, which yep. was like, yeah, this is awesome. This is great. More more than that, it was just nice having this full of people. Sure. And the excitement and the energy yep. that came around with it. Um, that was great and then yeah the pandemic hit in like late February or March mm -hmm. and uh, it was we just kept going we stayed open the whole time um, I had a lot of questions for Kevin you know he was doing his best because he didn't know what to see I'm sure you know no one has right. um, but just trying to think about what can we do to put people's minds at ease and make them still trust in, you know, this industry and this business and yep. um, trust that it's safe and uh, healthy still. Um, so when it 
really we just you know what are the government guidelines? What are what society can uh, require of it? You know, and we just sort of roll with that. Okay, this is the expectation. This is what they think is going to keep people healthy and safe. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to do that. So. <clears throat> How can we do that and still be accommodating and still uh, be uh, useful to our customers? Uh, one thing that we have is a buffet, yep. um, and that was great. You know, we were always packed here with buffet over lunch. Uh, that was a great opportunity for people to just try a lot of our pizzas and, and sort of get familiar with it. And then pandemic did hit, you know, the face were one of the first things that I yeah. need to get rid of. Yeah. Because, you know, multiple people touching, close proximity, yeah. all of that. So we were sort of counting on the buffet sort of being staple and now we can't have it at all. Yeah. And we didn't have it for a few months, but so we decided, okay, what kind of deal can we do to sort of give people a mini buffet or something that is a comparable price easy, quick to get over the lunch, yep. you know, time. And, and so that's one of the things we had to do to adjust. So like a mini pizza, a pop, and a salad, you know, we were preparing those ahead of time to make it quick and easy for people. Um, something else we had to do to sort of adjust is just really focus on our cleaning practices and sanitation, you know, every restaurant strives for that and every restaurant has that established. Sure. Uh, but COVID really forced you to maybe even go deeper with that and a little more stricter. So um, <clears throat> that's that's probably the biggest thing that I can think of that we had to do to sure. um, adjust and make a little change. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you and I had a conversation kind of when the pandemic was. Uh, I don't know if you'll remember this, but it was, you know, we were into the pandemic maybe a month or so, and I kind of asked you how it, you know, how it was affecting the business, and you said that in, in one aspect, it gave you a chance to kind of take a step back, uh, because in the honeymoon phase, those first couple months, people being in here all the time, going crazy, like kind of drinking from the fire hose and figuring things out, but the pandemic kind of gave you a chance to take a step back in your employees as well. Kind of figure things out a little bit, like you said, the cleaning process and things like that. But just to give yourself a little bit more of a breather where you can kind of figure out the internal side of the business and make things better uh, without, you know, track and things like that. So, yeah, that, that did help. Um, obviously, when sales are at a certain level and then they're not even close right. to that anymore, that's going to be scary. Right. Um, however, having the cells, you know, drop back a little bit, and like you said, uh, maybe not all the craziness, it settles down a little bit, it's more manageable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can sort of see, okay, this level of cells where we were at, where it was packed all the time and crazy, we would love to have that all the time. But were we doing a good job during that time? You know, how many times did people have to wait on orders? And um, how many people did we lose because of that? Just because we weren't quite prepared, we were still learning. Yeah. And like I said, we started off better than expected. Mm -hmm. um, so slowing down and seeing, okay, we want to achieve those sales again, but we want to make sure people are taken care of. Right. And so, yeah, stepping back, that allows us to you know, see when rushes are coming, see when sales are coming, and yeah. for, for people are going to be waiting, and, you know, stuff like that, and just uh, managing that and, and rolling with it and, yeah. and adjusting to whatever the night brings, you know. Sure. Um, so, yeah, sort of getting punched in the face um, allowed us to realize, okay, we can learn from that, we can adjust, and so now we're in the phase where we're trying to build sales back up and, yeah. and, and uh, get closer to where we were. Yeah. Uh, but now we're better equipped to do that and uh, make sure people are happy and uh, not waiting and sure. getting quality pizza still. So. Yeah. 
because February of 2021, when we're recording this, this is probably the most, and I'm using air quotes here, normal that things have been for you since you opened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like I was telling you yesterday, it was just um, our sales were quite a bit higher than what we expected for a Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday has been sort of slow. And so, yeah, it felt normal. I mean, we had 20 people in the dining room yeah. in the evening just eating and enjoying their night out. And yeah, it was similar to when we opened. Yeah. Um, and that is, that just, that feels good. That's fulfilling for yeah. me. Like I said, just having people in here creates an energy and excitement. And, and that's what we wanted. We wanted to just, you know, be, be seeing people, serving people, sure. communicating, conversing, you know, just, yeah. All the stuff you had been doing. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So what's one thing you wish you were better at? Um, going back to the books, you know, like I mentioned, you know, it's easy to read about all of that and learn yeah. um, how to do stuff well. It's far more difficult to implement it. Yeah. Um, we, we're relational. We love our staff. We care for them. Um, we're not just, you know, Kara and I aren't just a couple that were seated here with the building. Yeah. And we're just expected to run it and have high sales, you know. Sure. This is this is our restaurant, this is our business. Like yeah. we want it to do well. And uh, in order for it to do well, you know, our employees need to be comfortable and happy and treated well. Um, so I, I still struggle at that, you know, I I I want to be a nice, caring, you know, boss owner but also you need to make money you yeah know, to pay wages to pay bills and, and do all that so trying to find that balance you know i don't want to be a jerk ever or, or be hard but some sometimes you just you know if they aren't quite realizing it yeah you need to find ways to motivate yeah find ways to motivate and and just instill some sort of understanding yeah in their mind and, and even that just saying that I feel like a jerk just saying that but um but you gotta build just a culture. part of it yeah I mean you have to build a culture and that takes time and uh, getting your processes and procedures down can help eliminate that as far as you know here's what you do if we're slow you know those types of things it just takes time and yeah. I think that no matter what the business is whether you're in the service industry or whatever I think a lot of small business owners struggle with that because you got to make money, but if you really care about your people and want to build a culture, and I mean, you would have had to have, if you worked at Gambino's when you were in high school, when you were 15 years old, and you went out to college and this was in the back of your mind, you had to have a positive experience when you were in high school, otherwise, yeah. you know, you wouldn't have thought of, even thought about doing this you know, when you were an adult. So yeah. you kind of want to, have come full circle and instill that in your employees now. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and and that's probably a testament to Kevin, um, as he was the owner of Gambino's, you know, the one I worked at back then. Um, he's a, you've never met him, but he's a big guy, intimidating guy, but deep down he's a teddy bear, you yeah. know, and very soft and, and, uh, and quiet, but he can be firm when he needs to be. Yeah. And, and I've seen both sides of it. And uh, yeah, like you said, the policies and procedures and expectations and following specs, you know, once we get that established and people understand, like, it's important to follow that, you know, not only because it's our expectations, but because uh, the state and health departments have a certain expectations. Right. Once they can understand and follow that, then that allows us to have that culture and, and build those relationships and have fun and enjoy each other's company. Sure. Um, knowing that those are established and that's taken care of, then you build relationships and then that overflows to, you know, the customers as yeah. well and the community and 
it's all part of the service aspect. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So if you could go back um, to whatever point before you opened, is there any piece of advice that you would give yourself um, before you opened, or would you just kind of let things go? Um, obviously, you could you know, talk about a pandemic coming. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be different. But is there anything that you would tell yourself to prepare for, or would you just kind of let things go as they have because of the lessons you learned? Um, yeah, there are things that I would like to tell myself before that, but you know, thinking about it, I don't know that it would have made any difference. Would you have listened to yourself? Yeah. Um, like I mentioned, in high school and college, I did what I needed to get by. Yeah. And uh, knew that I could be successful and work hard. I didn't need a grade to tell me that. Um, but I was also quite the procrastinator. Right. Would put stuff off, knowing that um, I can work harder when I'm under the gun and, and just get it done. Sure. Um, so I knew that I already sort of had that instilled in me, unfortunately. One of my vices is just being a procrastinator. Um, if I could have told myself, don't put stuff off. Just stay on top of it. Yeah. Stay prepared. Stay ahead of it. I wouldn't be playing as much catch up as I am now, you know? And yeah. just and just catch up just to sort of put my mind at ease and to be organized and on top of it. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, again, drinking through a fire hose, like right. you said. Uh, I wasn't able to do a lot of that stuff because we just had to, you know, do what needed to be done in store. Yeah. Um, some of that stuff just kind of be addressed. So. That's hard to prepare for that. Yeah, I mean, you, you never know. And Carney is an amazing community when it comes to supporting, especially new restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to prepare for, um, you know, the influx of people that are going to be coming in. You just kind of have to figure it out as you go. So. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, if I could tell myself one thing, just prepare, don't put it on, stay organized, stay on top of it. Right. Um, and as far as if we knew a pandemic was coming, Karen and I have said it, we still would have opened because this is what we want to do. And the pandemic gave us the opportunity to really show like we want to support, you know, the medical field and, and the law enforcement and um, people who are sort of on the front lines of all of this, sure. dealing with it, and just showing we just letting them know we know this is difficult. You know, it's tough. It's not what you signed up for either. Right. Um, hopefully what we can share with you helps alleviate, you know, that stress a little bit or yeah. brighten up your day. So, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we're still doing what we wanted to do. It's just looking a little different. Sure. You know, right now. So, yeah. My wife's a nurse in the ER, so I know I would hear about it in the morning when she would come home that, you know, you guys would send pizzas over. You didn't have to do that, but you would send pizzas over to the emergency room and uh, just kind of brighten up their day. You know, like I said, they didn't sign up for that either, and they're going through a lot, but it just it makes a difference. So yeah. that's cool. Yeah, and it was, and having worked at the hospital, I knew a lot of them, so yeah. it was easy to say, yeah, let's help them out and, and do that. So, yeah, we awesome. enjoyed that. We definitely enjoy that. So. Yeah. yeah, I know they did too. Yeah. All right, so last question. Um, someone comes to you and they want advice about starting a small business. Um, what advice would you give to them? Uh, what piece of advice you would give to them uh, as they start now? Um, I would, so, Something that I forgot to mention when we were talking about leading up to opening Gambino's is I also, I wouldn't really call it a business, but maybe a glorified hobby. I started a staging shirt company, which was just me being creative while I was at Stryker, you know, sure. having something else to do. So I made designs and made shirts and sold shirts for a few years. Okay. And uh, that is something that I just, I didn't really plan out, didn't set out, um, had this idea, started making my drawings and 
um, my designs, and then just started putting it out there. Not sure how we were going to sell it or what we were going to do. Right. Um, and so that I I made mistakes with it, and you know whether we still continue that or not, it's sort of on life support. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still there. Um, but it's, it doesn't have the foundation and the structure that Gambino's Pizza does. Okay. And that's something that attracted us to actually doing this, is there's a game plan to it, there's a blueprint that um, uh, Kevin and corporate has already sort of laid out. Um, we have a lot of room to sort of make it our own, do our own thing, but we also follow their guidelines. So having that structure was good. Um, so getting back to my advice is I've sort of been a part of both areas and seen how it's been successful or failed. Yeah. Um, my advice is don't wait too long. Just you got to do it. Don't be putting it off right. and waiting for it to be perfect and ready to happen because that'll never right. you'll never get there. Right. Um, but the sooner you can just jump into it and get going and start making mistakes, you're able to learn from them and grow yep. and be successful. Um, I remember in high school, I had a coach who said, you know, don't be scared to make mistakes, like make mistakes big and make them uh, observable, you know, make them so we come down on you and let sure. you know you made a mistake, but then Need to learn from it yeah. you know figure out why you made that and what you could have done differently and then just learn from it and move on and that's something that um, I also tell my employees here you know make a mistake um, I'll address it with you don't be or if you make one I don't know about it don't be scared to let me know and just say hey this happened because um, it's an opportunity to learn you know sure and uh, I guess the sooner you can just start in on a small business or start doing something um, to make mistakes, to learn from them, that's where the most growth is going to come from and, yeah. and you figure out how to run something well, yeah. I guess. Very good. Yeah. It sounds awesome. silly, it sounds backwards, but... Well, anybody who's been in that situation uh, kind of knows that you know, you wait for the perfect time and it'll never come. Uh, but at the same time, you're scared of making mistakes. That really is ultimately how you get better at whatever you're gonna do. Yeah. Uh, some, sometimes those hard lessons that you have to learn, or those lessons you have to learn the hard way are the ones that stick with you forever. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. So, um, you gotta open here soon. So, let me uh, <laughs> let me ask you, how do we find out more about the Indians? Social media, website, yeah, so we've got a Facebook page. That's where we share most of our deals, our promotions, okay. what's going on. Um, that's probably where you're going to find the information the quickest. Okay. Um, and then our website is GambinosPizza.com, and uh, it has all of the stores on there. So you have to find Carney yeah. if you want to order some pizza. But, um, it's not that hard. Identical. It's not that difficult. You can figure it out. Yeah. Um, this weekend, I don't know how soon you're putting this out, but this weekend we're doing half price larges okay. on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So last weekend of every February, all Gambinos do half price larges uh, just for their customer appreciation weekend. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Um, this will be out tomorrow, so everybody take advantage of the half price. Mm -hmm. Um, they'll be going on this weekend. Congratulations on 2020 New Business of the Year from Carney Chamber. Yeah, that's I didn't awesome. Think about that. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so congratulations on that. Um, I really appreciate the time. Appreciate the advice that you have given everyone, and uh, look forward to uh, hear more about you in the future. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Thanks.